Hey, welcome. Manchester Music, Jeff Manchester. Welcome to my dimly lit bachelor nightmare. Um, so today we're going to be talking about percussion, uh, symphony series, which is the latest sort of addition from native instruments in the symphony series. We had brass, we had strings, we had woodwinds, and now we sort of complete the picture with percussion. And a lot of people have been asking me what I think about this library. I got my hands on it, and now I'm going to talk about that. But before I talk about anything to do with um, the playability, articulations, all that stuff, the cool tech that's in it, like drumhead resonance simulation, I think I should mention one thing that's kind of important at the, at the get-go here. Um, we all know other companies out there, Spitfire, Orchestral Tools, you name them. Um, they have something in co they have something that is consistent about them that this package doesn't, and that's that they were all kind of recorded, for the most part, in the same place. So Spitfire Audio, for example, records all their stuff. They pretty much taken up residence at Air Studios in London. Orchestral Tools, they I think do everything at the Teldex Studio um, in Germany. So. Keep in mind, this percussion tool that just came out, um, this was recorded in Budapest, Studio 22. The strings were also recorded in Budapest, Studio 22. However, if you're bringing in your brass and your woodwinds, you should just know that those guys were sampled somewhere else. They were sampled, the, uh, the brass was sampled at St. Paul's Church, San Francisco, and the woodwinds were sampled at Montclair Presbyterian Church in Oakland. And also there were different companies behind these tools. So the woodwinds and brass were by Soundiron, and then the Audio Bro company took over the strings, and this one is actually by Sonu Score. Uh, so while Native Instruments is indeed the storefront, the, the place where uh, these guys can uh, collaborate with Native Instruments on a UI level and everything, they were developed by different companies. Why am, I, my, why am I mentioning this? Why does it matter? It doesn't really matter. I can't really tell the difference between samples from one room to another, but some people really care about this stuff, and I thought that I would be remiss as a sort of YouTube person being objective and all that if I didn't mention the fact that that is out there. I've seen some... Uh, internet forums or whatever where they just talk about you know things were sampled over here and over there and you have to work at it personally I mean I just did a uh, anatomy of a cue video where I use Spitfire stuff I use native instrument stuff I used orchestral tool stuff I used a whole bunch of different guys and to me you know it it's kind of a no-brainer they're all gonna sound uh, great together as long as the arrangement is compelling and all the rest of it in my experience some people might be a little more persnickety about this thing and I'll probably hear from them in the comments but I feel like now that you know that, um, just be aware of that. And to me, that it's not a minus. It's just something that I feel as a YouTube personality. I just I should mention. So now that I've gotten that out of the way, the thing I want to talk about the the most here with this library, and you can go to other channels and you can look at the manual to see like what's in it. Forty gigs, blah blah blah. I just don't feel like that needs to be part of my discussion today. The big thing, the thing that makes this uh, library different from others is the new tech in it. And by new tech, I mean this uh, drum head resonance simulation, DHRS. And what this does, according to Native Instruments, and I guess Sonu Score is, it samples, it switches between samples that have um, uh, resonating drum heads and non and samples without the sort of resonance and by I guess by pairing these two intelligently together and sort of triggering back and forth uh, it can create a kind of resonance or it can sort of impart uh, a sort of authentic resonance feel by you know switching back and forth and firing between those two samples dry and wet uh, with resonance so that is something new and I think that the best way to sort of test that is to compare it to another library uh, maybe something um, well, I already know what it's going to be. It's going to be from Orchestral Tools. So I know I've been talking a lot. I talk a lot on this channel. Let's just dive in here to timpani. And uh, right now I'm going to open the, this is, we're looking at the percussion um, library right now from Native Instruments and Sonu Score. This is what it looks like. It's very consistent with the UI of the brass and the woodwinds. Big dynamics knob here. We have uh, performance. This gives us uh, all our articulations and the keyboard obviously lights up down here. Mapping will give us a better idea of what is where. Uh, on the keyboard, and that is consistent throughout all the other instruments that you go through and, and samples and, and patches. And then we have a mixer, which is really helpful, which is where we can um, basically change the microphone mixer. We can change how close, how far, how panoramic, how sort of narrow the sounds are. Uh, obviously, getting to know these positions and hearing them and listening to them, especially with your own reverbs or the reverbs that come with um, uh, the percussion. Uh, symphony series tool here is really helpful. You should listen to them and get a feel for them and know, you know, how certain sounds sound within the context of one reverb over another, one mic over another. The really cool thing is we have spot miking, which is a lot of fun, which I don't really see a lot in other libraries, so that's kind of cool. At least I don't see it outright. It's not given its own sort of um, uh, slider right here. Now, getting to this test. I have orchestral tools 
next up here and I've also got some timpani stuff here we're going to be using close mics and the reason I'm doing this is just to see if the drum resonance imparts a sort of audible difference between libraries maybe it will maybe it won't maybe one will sound more realistic maybe the other won't I don't know but it's up for you guys to decide so I'm just going to go to my performance patch here We see the drum resonance simulation on the bottom right there doing its thing. Actually, I just want to make sure that I am on my mixer here and I am, no, I want to do close miking because I have close miking on orchestral tools. As more rolls. Now, let's go to orchestral tools and see if we can get something going here. So I have timpani as well. I believe I am on a hard rolls. Yep, perfect. Quickly, while we have that in our ears, let's switch over. The thing that I'm noticing when I switch back and forth between these libraries and when we use stuff that has the drumhead resonance simulation and the other one that doesn't is the hits, the attacks of those, you know, of our, our session player hitting those. Um, hitting those drums, we can, to me, they're very defined in the Orchestral Tools one, and they're a little bit more blurry in the percussion uh, symphony series. And I mean blurry in kind of a good way, because usually that's how it sounds. You can't hear the individual hits because, I guess, because of the resonance and because of the room and because of the way that, you know, you're sort of banging on the, on the skin of the drum. It just sort of blurs things together and builds, instead of like a series of strikes, it just builds this one kind of sound pulsating going out of the drum and resonating. And I feel like we get that with this library. And we don't really get that with orchestral tools. Is It just sounds like we can really hear those, uh, those strikes in a, a very defined way, which could be a good th thing or a bad thing. So hopefully you know what I mean. You can really hear the pitter powder of the attacks. They're very sinewy and defined here. But when I switch... We get this nice fog kind of of um, this this foggy crescendo rise up. So, I thought that would be a nice way just to compare instead of just staying inside of native instruments and, and really testing the new tech. Because after all, that's why these companies do things like this. They know native instruments, Sony Score. They know that a lot of other libraries are out there. So it's like, what can we do to make it a more compelling offering? What can we do to really differentiate ourselves and have a kind of competitive advantage? And that usually the new tech is where you sort of you say, well. We are doing a sample library. It is about percussion, but no one else has X, Y, or Z. So, and yes, Z, because I'm Canadian. Um, let's go over here and explore a little bit more of the library. I've shown you what's under the hood, the mapping, the mixer, the performance. And I'll just go down and find you. And so we have a number of folders here, drums, tune percussion symbols, metal wood kits. Uh, the tune percussion is really cool because we've got this lovely low piano, which I'll load in here. Yeah, I want to make some changes. Switch octaves. So again, we get access to the mixer, the microphone mixer, all that fun stuff. Mapping is a little bit different. We have fewer articulations. In fact, we only have one really, which is that hit.
Um, we have marimba. The timpani was exhaustively sampled, uh, I think for good reason, because we really care about our timpanis here in the orchestral world. So we have hits, we have damping, we have um, crescendos, tremolos, uh, which I just sort of showed you. So I'm not, not going to spend too much time there. The vibraphone was also very elegantly sampled in my view, although I wish it had, I, I wish all these guys, all the tune percussion guys had as many articulations captured as the timpani, but c'est la vie. <laughs> One of the nice things here is that we have these kits which are made up and abstracted from other samples in the library um, and we're able to have them sort of in, a, in one place that makes it really easy for us to access them and get started quickly. If I go for the, uh, actually, where did I find, I think the big hits kit, it's really cool because they've managed to marry some of the samples with other samples in sort of arranged marriages. So we have the tune percussion here taking up, I think, middle C. With some of the bass drums that were very beautifully sampled in, in another folder which I'll show you maybe after at the end but you can go So we get like a multi-timbral sort of sampling engine here where we can affect a number of different things but it is sort of a forced marriage at least over here We have, I might as well go to some of the drums here, just the bass drum one, which is probably going to be the first thing that people put in anyway when they're going um, to play this stuff. So we have crescendos, same sort of articulations here. We also have velocity layers, which is really helpful. So instead of just, um, so I guess instead of, you know, hitting your, your fingers into your MIDI keyboard, they've actually made it even more detailed and they have a velocity layer from C3 to C4. And instead of just, you know, attacking uh, very subjectively, we get all these notes laid out in front of us. So we can go from this. To and of course, we can also turn these into tremolo, I believe. is restricted to just one sort of um, velocity layer which makes sense because we can I guess control that by the mod wheel that makes way more sense so the last thing I, I want to show you here in the kits is just this lovely FX drone kit which I really like um, and this is great for sound design so you can imagine using this alongside maybe thrill or something like that You can see I getting into the mixer here, maybe by adding some of the spot mics and some reverb, you can get to a really sort of nasty, let's add some delay and the amount there and I'll turn this on. Orchestral percussion kit, snares kit, toms kit, toy kit, which is a lot of fun too. A lot of fun. Anyway. That is a quick and dirty overview of the percussion. S percussion. P 
puzzle piece from the symphony series uh thanks very much for watching if you have any more questions or anything like that leave them in the comments like subscribe blah 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 take care manchester music jeff manchester out